Hi everyone, it's a pleasure to be speaking here today. Uh, my name is Villa Brofat. Uh, I'm a committer and PMC member at Apache Superset and more recently a committer at the Apache eCharts. Um, I work for a company called Preset, uh, which is building a SaaS offering around Apache Superset. Uh, and Preset was founded by Max, uh, uh, who's the original founder of the Superset project. Uh, and we're gonna be launching a generally available product soon. Uh, so follow us on LinkedIn if you want to stay up to date with uh, what's going on. So just a brief history of my involvement with the project. Um, so much like everyone I assume here, uh, I've, I've been using a lot of different Apache projects uh, over the years, and especially from, from the, the, the data, data engineering and big data ecosystem. But I, I actually got involved with Apache Superset completely by accident. Uh, so uh, a long time ago, I was uh, telling a friend of mine that... Uh, I had kind of noticed that uh, uh, open source had done wonders to uh, the world of big data and uh, data science, uh, and, uh, but it just didn't seem like it was ever going to break through in business intelligence. Uh, so at, at the time, uh, data scientists were using notebooks for, um, for uh, um, uh, both transforming their data so that they were using Pandas and Spark uh, for the transformations, uh, and then they were uh, visualizing with uh, charting libraries like matplotlib and uh, seaborn and, and so forth. But then on the other hand, we had data analysts uh, who were um, usually using uh, uh, totally commercial uh, tools like Tableau and Looker and, and Power BI. Uh, and it seemed like uh, there was kind of a big divide between these worlds and, uh, and it just didn't seem like... Um, there was a lot of uh, interest in, in actually implementing anything open source uh, for that world. Uh, but uh, uh, just a few days later, uh, I was talking to a data scientist friend of mine, uh, and he, he was showing me something else on his laptop, but then he kind of just happened to ask me, you know, have you seen this thing called Apache Superset? Uh, and what he showed me was exactly what I had been telling my friend just a few days earlier uh, is, is never gonna happen. So. Uh, this was kind of a full-blown uh, BI, uh, BI toolkit um, that was fully open source and, uh, and uh, Apache licensed. So I was completely blown away by this. Uh, so I installed it on my laptop right away and, and started tinkering with it. And, uh, and after playing around with it for a while, I, I found a, a small bug. So then um, I, I thought, you know, I could perhaps fix this because I, I know Python fairly well. Uh, so uh, I started looking into fixing it, uh, and then uh, then I opened up a PR. And I had never done any open source PRs before, so this was kind of a big step for me. And it started out just being one liner, but then during code review, um, I got good comments for it, and I was asked to add a unit test. Uh, added the unit test, and then uh, got finally got the PR merged. Uh, and so then over time. One PR became many PRs uh, as I kept using the tool. And then I guess it got kind of out of hand because uh, here I am uh, hundreds of PRs later and um, I'm, I'm a PMC member for one uh, Apache project and then a committer for another one. So uh, it, it's, been, it's been a great ride and uh, I look forward to uh, being, being along for the ride for, for many more years to come. So today I'm gonna to be talking about how uh, Superset uh, is uh, increasingly adopting e-charts to replace NVD3 and uh, the motivations behind the switch. So before we start, just a quick introduction into what Apache Superset actually is. Uh, so I took these snapshots from uh, the Superset homepage, uh, which has a bunch of really good documentation. So uh, if you haven't seen this new homepage yet and you've just seen the old one, I, I recommend checking it out because uh, the, the documentation is much better now and it, it's kind of easier to use as well. Uh, and I think the, the text on the front page actually, actually explains this the best. So it says, uh, Apache Superset is a modern data exploration and visualization platform. Uh, and uh, what that means in practice is that uh, Superset is kind of first and foremost uh, a business intelligence tool. Uh, but then uh, in addition to that, it's, it's kind, of a, kind of a general purpose uh, data exploration tool. So there's uh, in addition to just being able to do charts or dashboards, uh, you can also do a, a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so it's, it's very, very easy to, um, to explore uh, data in your database. Uh, and uh, there, there's a, a SQL IDE uh, 
within superset as well, which is uh, quite popular. And, and, and many, many people use that as their, their primary uh, SQL IDE. So I think a demo says more than a thousand words. Uh, so I'm gonna do a, do a quick demo of, uh, of what it looks like. So uh, this is what a dashboard in Superset looks like. Uh, and this is, this is one of the examples dashboards that comes along uh, with um, when you install Superset and then install the examples uh, data sets. So um, as you can see here, it's, it's kind of a regular BI tool, uh, lots of different chart types. Um, there's kind of big numbers, uh, lines, pies, tables, uh, geospatial, um, box plots, tree maps, uh, bubble plots, and so forth. Uh, and uh, I've made a sm small modification here. So uh, uh, for those who haven't used Superset for a while, you, you might not have heard of uh, native filters, uh, but it's um, before we used to have this thing called a filter box, was, uh, which was essentially a visualization or a chart uh, that was placed on a dashboard and then you could um, filter uh, using that. But we've now introduced something called uh, native filters, uh, which introduces a, um, uh, a filter tab on the left side of the screen. Uh, and here you can do the same things as, as you did with the filter box before, uh, but it's just much more convenient and it's kind of uh, out of the way. So here I can just, by just a, a few clicks of the button, uh, I can filter the dashboard. Uh, this highlight shows which uh, charts uh, are being affected by the filter. You can uh, make some charts uh, immune uh, to certain filters. Um, it's um, very easy to use and very kind of powerful. Uh, and then uh, in addition to uh, the stuff that Filterbox offered, there's also some new uh, filter types here. So there's a numerical slider. So if I wanna see countries that have more than 500 million uh, inhabitants, I can just kind of slide the slider uh, and then just apply. Uh, and when I do that, then I'm going to see uh, instantly, okay, uh, it's just China and India that has more than 500 million inhabitants. Uh, and then uh, on each chart, there's going to be a, a filter indicator that uh, shows uh, which filters are, are affecting the chart uh, and uh, with what kind of values uh, they're being affected. Uh, so that's, that's for the dashboarding. Uh, and then for uh, the SQL IDE, uh, what you can do here is um, you can uh, write SQL, so you can just kind of, uh, in general, explore your data if you want to, but then you can also um, make uh, kind of virtual tables. So if, if, uh, if you want to do some SQL, um, essentially kind of doing a, doing a view, uh, but um, uh, you don't need to make, create a view in your database, but you can actually just write the SQL for it uh, and then uh, just click explore here. And once you, uh, once you do that, then it's gonna open up the explore view uh, where you can then uh, start uh, creating your, your visualization. So uh, very easy to use uh, and um, kind of very quick, uh, uh, quick workflow from, from data to actual visualizations as well. So um, the typical uh, installation for, uh, for Superset looks kind of like this. So uh, Superset requires having uh, Python 3.7 for hosting the backend. Uh, you have to have a metadata database, uh, which, uh, which essentially stores all, all of the table and database and uh, chart data. Uh, and that has to run on either Postgres or MySQL. Uh, then database connectivity is uh, handled using SQL Alchemy, uh, and then uh, whichever uh, database you want to connect to, uh, you also have to install the, the relevant drivers for those. So if you want to, for instance, uh, uh, hook up to a, a, a big data instance uh, or a, a big query instance, then uh, you just have to install that driver, uh, and then uh, Superset's going to automatically pick that up as well. Uh, Superset was originally developed uh, for uh, using the, the native um, uh, Druid REST uh, connector, uh, and there, there's still support for that, uh, but 
going forward, that's going to be uh, fully deprecated. And anyone who's thinking about using superset for analyzing data that's in a Druid, uh, Druid cluster should definitely be using the SQL Alchemy connector for that. Uh, and then just the other kind of core libraries. So uh, Superset itself is built on Flask App Builder, uh, and then data transformations and kind of data handling is, is done using uh, Pandas and Apache Arrow. Uh, and then on the front end side, uh, we're uh, running Node 14. Uh, most of the code nowadays is, is in TypeScript, but some of the legacy code is still in JavaScript. Uh, the application itself is React-based. Uh, we're using Redux for state management. Uh, then uh, these um, UI components are uh, designed using Ant Design, uh, and then we're do, uh, using Emotion for styling. Uh, and then all charts are uh, JavaScript or TypeScript, uh, so we don't support, for instance, any, uh, any Python-based uh, visualization libraries at this time. Uh, so those are kind of the, the minimum requirements, but then uh, it's also highly recommended to be using uh, Redis for caching. Uh, and with um, when, you, when you enable caching, what you can do is um, if you have a big installation, for instance, if, if you have thousands of people looking at the same dashboard every day, then um, uh, if that dashboard has very expensive queries, then it's enough. Uh, uh, then when you load up the dashboard for the first time, it, it issues these very expensive queries uh, and then when it gets the results back, uh, then those are placed in the cache. So then when uh, other people come in and look at those same dashboards, uh, they're not going to have to uh, uh, run, execute those expensive queries again, but they can just kind of hit the cache and get the data back from there. So I think this is actually one of the, the most powerful features of Superset. Uh, and this is really kind of what makes Superset kind of petabyte scale because um, uh, you don't need to do the, those expensive table scans every single time you, you want data. Uh, you can just kind of hit the cache. And, and then there's also a lot of uh, functionality around warming, warming up the cache and then invalidating the cache when, when new data comes in. So, so you can build, for instance, Airflow uh, workflows where uh, when new data comes in, it then uh, invalidates uh, all, all, all of the tables in the cache that are referencing that table. Uh, then you can also use Celery for uh, scheduling and async functionality. Uh, and then Selenium is, is used for uh, thumbnails and uh, reports and alerts. Uh, and then there's also this new feature, uh, which is still behind a feature flag, but it's, uh, it's pretty stable already. Uh, so it's, it's called Global As Async Queries, and it's, it's running on a, uh, a node-based web so socket sidecar. And, and it makes uh, all chart data requests uh, fully asynchronous. Uh, also, when, when you're uh, requesting data on, uh, on a dashboard, because um, uh, until now, uh, only C SQL, SQL lab queries were, um, uh, were asynchronous by nature. All right, so, so back to why we started moving away from NVD3. Uh, so uh, NVD3 was a great fit for the project in, in the early days, uh, and it, it provides a, a ton of easy to use chart types out of the box. And back then when, when the project was started, the focus was very much on being able to visualize data in, in Druid. So, um, so uh, performance and uh, aesthetics were kind of, second, sec, uh, of secondary importance. The, the most important thing was just kind of getting those data insights. Uh, but over time, the, the need for customizations grew and uh, as Supersets uh, started adding support for uh, SQL Alchemy and, and new uh, other database types, uh, Superset also kind of needed to get on, on parity with uh, or on par with other uh, BI tools. Uh, so, um, so over time, uh, NVD3, uh, as it was back then, uh, wasn't really enough anymore. But then the, the problem is, uh, as the demand started getting bigger, uh, NVD3, NVD3 started slowing down. Uh, so as you can see here, this is a chart from uh, the NVD3 GitHub uh, page where um, there's a commit frequency. And as you can see, it, it completely stops uh, in mid-2018. Uh, so uh, the project essentially stopped uh, accepting PRs and uh, stopped uh, doing new releases uh, at that time. But at the same time, Apache eCharts was gaining some crazy momentum. Uh, so it was becoming 
obvious uh, obvious to everyone that um, we needed needed to move away from uh, NVD3 and um, e-charts with this this great uh, development um, was uh, was a, a clear winner to us. So um, th there were actually multiple efforts to add support for for um, e charts and and adding new chart types uh, that were that were based on e charts. Uh, but it was kind of difficult to integrate those because uh, the the architecture uh, or the the superset architecture was built very much around NVD3. So um, we needed to do some some additional work on the back end uh, to actually add add proper support for uh, adding other charting libraries. The uh, the original superset architecture was very monolithic by nature. Um, so. Charts were written in, in JavaScript and TypeScript, uh, and then those sent control values or the, the values when, when you're in the Explorer view and you select what to group by, what kind of metrics you're using. It just sent those over to the back end uh, along with uh, the, the chart type. And then the back end knew exactly what to do with those requests. Uh, so there was kind of a one-to-one uh, -one mapping in the back end between, you know, uh, line chart, do this kind of processing, pie chart, do this kind of processing. So uh, this was very convenient for, um, for the, the front-end developer, essentially, because the front-end developer just kind of offloaded uh, whatever uh, chart metadata there was and then just, just sent that to the backend. And then the, the backend received those and then had kind of a lookup table where it knew exactly what, uh, what to do with that, that request and then uh, sent the response back. But the, the problem with this architecture is that, uh, first of all, uh, it required both front-end and back-end work every single time you added a uh, new visualization type. Uh, so you had to write, of course, the, the, the visualization plugin itself, but then you also had, it, had to add uh, the, the code to the back-end uh, that then uh, kind of translated the, the request uh, to, to an actual response. Uh, and this became kind of difficult over time because all, all, of, all, all of this transformation logic was always kind of dumped into this one file uh, in the back end, which made it very kind of difficult to maintain. Uh, and then there was actually a lot of duplicated code there as well. Uh, so over time, this became really, really difficult to manage and maintain. Uh, and in, in practice, uh, this led to the fact that no, no new plugins were introduced for, uh, for a time period of uh, over two years. So it completely kind of stagnated uh, all new visualization development work. So the decision was then to uh, build a new chart plugin architecture. And, and the idea here was uh, to uh, uh, make the backend uh, or add a, a new chart data endpoint uh, to the backend, which was uh, totally generic uh, and didn't really kind of know about the context that the, the chart was going to be using the data with. So it, it kind of required making a very specific uh, data request. And then based on that, it could then uh, fetch the data from, from, the back, uh, from, from the analytical database and then do any uh, necessary transformations to it. Uh, and then the front end would then have to be very aware of what kind of data it's going to need. So uh, the request uh, had to be more verbose and explain exactly what, what needed to happen. Uh, so here's the, just kind of a similar workflow uh, uh, that, that was described just a second ago. So originally when, when the front end uh, requested data, it just sent uh, the metadata to the back end, then, then the back end knew exactly what to do with, with the metadata. Uh, but in, in the new world, that would have resulted in a, in a 400 uh, error response. So uh, what the front end needed to do now was um, know exactly what to request. And then the, the back end uh, was just kind of, um, was able to focus completely on uh, just delivering uh, and executing uh, those instructions. To make it easier for, for developers then to leverage this new system, uh, we uh, created a uh, Yeoman generator template which makes it uh, very easy uh, with essentially just kind of a few clicks of a button uh, you could uh, create this uh, Hello World uh, visualization plugin and then start um, uh, making changes to that. And we've written a very extensive blog post about it uh, a year ago, which details exactly how to build one of these plugins and then how you can customize it um, to your own needs. So if you're interested in um, 
or if you're thinking about writing a visualization plugin for uh, Superset, uh, I urge you to check out this, this blog post first. And we actually maintain this blog post. So whenever we do any breaking changes to uh, the visualization plugin uh, framework, we always kind of backport uh, those, um, those changes to, to this blog post and uh, update the instructions. So then once we had this new architecture in place, uh, we could then uh, get on with creating the charts plugin. So essentially what we did was uh, we used our own uh, template. So we built this hello world and then we started implementing uh, e-charts into it. Uh, so um, what uh, uh, this, this plugin is, um, it, uh, it uses uh, the, the most recent version of e-charts uh, and then we've created a, a small React based wrapper uh, around it. So, so we have a we have a React component called eChart, and then um, you pass uh, an option object uh, to that component. And then once you do that, then it it renders uh, the visualization plugin. Uh, and then in, in addition to just kind of doing those plugins, uh, of course, we've added a bunch of tests for it. Uh, but then we've also done storybooks for, um, for, for the most common uh, use cases. Uh, so um, uh, so uh, it's kind of, uh, it's fairly easy to uh, kind of regression test um, uh, the, the plugins and uh, we're planning on uh, also adding these um, visual regression tests that are based on the storybooks. But... So, um, the, I think the reason why we, we chose uh, e-charts is uh, that we were super impressed by uh, just kind of the variety and, and features that e-charts offered. Uh, and if, uh, if uh, you guys have ever gone, gone to the e-charts homepage, you can see that there's, um, there's a ton of examples here. So, uh, uh, you just go to the eCharts homepage, then you click on examples, uh, and then you can just scroll through and look at what kind of examples they offer. And, and uh, uh, it almost seems like there's almost nothing you, you, uh, you can't visualize with eCharts. Um, and then in, in addition to having those examples here as, as thumbnails, you can actually click on any one of these uh, examples. And, and that's actually what we did. So uh, you click on the example and then you get uh, the, the source code for that. And it's very easy to, to just kind of pick out those, that code and then uh, paste that into your, your own uh, plugin and then do any, any necessary um, refinements and, uh, and uh, changes to that. So I think essentially all, all of the eCharts plugins that we've implemented are uh, originally based on some code from here that we've then uh, made small small changes to. Uh, but then also, in addition to there being a, a lot of variation in what kind of charts you can do, there's a, a lot of really, really cool functionality in, um, in eCharts. Uh, so what we've done here is, um, in addition to having uh, the ability to do filtering uh, using the filter tab on a dashboard, We've, we've also now added uh, cross filtering uh, to superset. So, um, and, uh, so what you can do here is uh, instead of clicking on, uh, on the native filters, you can then go to the chart and then you can click on, for instance, in, in, in the case of a pie chart, you can click on a slice and then it emits a, uh, it, it emits a, a filter out to all the other charts. So here you can say that we're, uh, we're emitting uh, the, the gender equals girl, uh, filter and then that gets picked up in the other charts. Uh, so it's it's very easy to to do that, and uh, we've um, we've enabled cross filtering for I think all e charts based charts now. So so any any of these charts uh, can now be used as filters as well. So I think this this definitely makes. Um, dashboards even more interactive because now now you can kind of um, uh, you can really have a dialogue with with your dashboard and kind of um, uh, click around and uh, have have all of those charts affecting each other so I think that's, that's really cool uh, so another uh, nice feature that that we've done uh, is we've implemented a uh, 
a forecasting package that Facebook has developed called Profit. And what Profit does is it, it makes it possible to do a time series forecasting. So uh, here in this case, I have an example chart where, where I have uh, weekly observation data. Uh, and if, if I go down to the predictive analytics section on the Explorer view, I can then just uh, check enable forecast. And then here in this case, I'm saying, uh, please forecast uh, 10, period, 10 time periods into the future. Uh, and uh, please draw a confidence interval of 80% uh, around those point estimates. So when I do that, it then uh, it shows the, the actual realizations uh, that were uh, as a line uh, just a second ago. Uh, and then it draws uh, a line, which is, uh, is the kind of point uh, estimate or the, the prediction. Uh, and then uh, it uh, draws the, the confidence interval uh, around the, that estimate. So um, this is, I think, a, a good example of uh, getting the best of both worlds. So we're using uh, Python-based uh, uh, libraries to do, um, uh, to do the uh, uh, data forecast, but then we're uh, visualizing this data in, in the front end. And then I think another thing that's, that's really impressive with uh, eCharts is the performance. And uh, performance wasn't actually, I think, uh, a pr primary concern when we started this migration, but uh, during the project, we actually noticed that uh, eCharts just performs much better than, than uh, NVD3. And uh, over time, we've actually noticed that, um, that performance um, or performance is becoming more and more uh, something that, that we want to focus on in, in, um, in Superset. Uh, so it, it fits very well with uh, the Superset roadmap. Uh, and here I've, I've done a dashboard just to um, demonstrate the performance of eCharts versus NVD3. So uh, I've, done, uh, I've done essentially the same graph uh, using eCharts and then NVD3. Uh, and both of these charts have 50,000 data points in them. Uh, and if I now collapse the filter tab, it's going to cause uh, the charts to re-render, uh, which when, when I do that, then we can see that the eCharts chart actually re-rendered uh, almost instantly, uh, but then the NVD3 chart is still kind of re-rendering. So um, it's... Um, when, if you have a big dashboard with, you know, tens, tens or hundreds of charts, uh, this can really compound itself um, over, uh, over time. So um, if, if you have uh, very many charts that have uh, a lot of data, then uh, with the old MVD3 based charts, those can really make your dashboard sluggish. Uh, and uh, now kind of being, when, when we start replacing these old charts with e-charts, we're noticing that uh, performance is really, really picking up. Uh, and I'm not sure if, uh, if this is, completely clear here over Zoom, but uh, when, I'm, when I'm hovering back and forth here on, on the eCharts chart, it's updating super quickly. Uh, and then when I do the same thing here on the NVD3 one, uh, it, it lags. It, well, first of all, it's very choppy, but then it, it lags a lot. Uh, so there's definitely um, a, a big performance difference here. And then I think the, the final important thing is, uh, is actually the community. Uh, so I think one of the original big problems we had with uh, the NVD3 uh, uh, library uh, was the fact that uh, we had a, a bunch of small bug fixes that, that we needed to get into the, uh, into the library, but uh, those weren't really kind of responded to on the, uh, the NVD3 GitHub page. Uh, so, um, but, Contrasting that with eCharts, we've, uh, we've had a, a very good response from the eCharts community. Uh, so uh, we've, uh, we've done some, some small bug fixes that are kind of, uh, that are important for, for the superset uh, application. Uh, and uh, the uh, eCharts the e core committers have, have been kind of very, very quick to, to review those and get those merged. Uh, and then we've uh, collaborated a lot on uh, the GitHub issues page, kind of discussing uh, feature requests and um, and kind of um, just just participating in, in the community and and we um, we found it to be very positive and and welcoming. Uh, so 
I think that just goes to show that uh, eCharts is, is not just a very good uh, charting library, but it also kind of uh, gives a promise of, uh, of this community uh, being around for, for quite some time. Uh, and, and I think we really value that after, um, after the, the problem with NVD3 kind of getting stale and, um, and not, not being maintained. So then uh, some future development ideas for superset. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I just uh, demonstrated uh, how cross filtering works, uh, but we're working on adding uh, drill through and drill down uh, by adding context menus um, to charts. So, so the idea would be, you know, you could right click on a slice on a pie chart and then you'd say, please drill into this slice uh, and um, and group by uh, another uh, dimension, for instance. Uh, so this is something that um, that I think is going to make uh, the dashboards even more interactive and, and something that, uh, that, I, that I find very promising. Uh, then also adding more predictive functionality. Uh, so I think profit is great for, uh, for the time series charts, but it uh, doesn't really, um, it doesn't work for non-time series data, but um, it would be very nice if, if we could add uh, more kind of predictive functionality to any types of charts. And, um, and the idea has come up a few times of, uh, of adding kind of a, uh, kind of a post-processing API uh, to, the, um, uh, to uh, the, the superset chart data endpoint so that you could actually plug in whatever, um, whatever predictive models you have, and then those could those could uh, then potentially accept any kind of data and then uh, give back any kind of predictive data back. Uh, and so uh, that way uh, it, it, it would be um, a great platform for um, making uh, dashboards uh, kind of looking uh, in, into the future and, and not just uh, showing kind of um, past results. And then also something uh, uh, dynamic controls uh, so one of one of the limitations right now in Superset uh, is that uh, the Explore uh, control panel uh, is is fairly kind of one dimensional, um, and uh, we really kind of just implemented um, a, a very small subset of the uh, customization options that the eCharts offers. Uh, but what we're hoping to do is um, to make the the control panel more dynamic, uh, so that uh, we could add essentially all, all the customization options that eCharts offers. Uh, and then that way, um, you know, we'd be able to first and foremost offer very good default values uh, when you do a chart uh, so, that, uh, so that it doesn't take that long to, uh, to create the initial chart. But then once you have the initial chart done, uh, then you could kind of fine tune and, and do any kind of small modifications you want to. Uh, and then also real-time charts uh, is something that I've been tinkering with uh, and uh, uh, eCharts offers adding data incrementally uh, and it's something that Superset really doesn't leverage yet. Uh, so Superset uh, always gets back the, the full data payload uh, when, uh, when making chart data requests. So it, um, it would be very nice to be able to add incrementally data, which would of course make dashboards kind of um, become more alive because you could have some, some uh, charts that would update at perhaps every 10 seconds and just uh, retrieve very small slices of data. Uh, and then on the same dashboard, you could have something that updates once a minute, something that updates once an hour. Uh, so uh, that, that could kind of really uh, ease up on the load on the analytical database, uh, but then it would also make, um, make, make the dashboards even more interactive. And then, of course, adding new visualizations. Um, so um, we now have something like nine uh, e-charts, kind of uh, core uh, visualization types. Uh, but uh, we're going to keep on adding more. Uh, and one area that I'm I'm really kind of excited about is geospatial charts. Uh, so uh, e-charts offers a lot of great uh, geospatial uh, kind of chart types. Uh, so those would be very, very nice to, um, to implement in, in Superset. And, and also adding kind of dynamic filtering based on, on, the, on the viewport. So when, when you drill down into a map, then that, that could uh, trigger a new query where uh, it, it then um, adds filters for, for, for the visual bounds. 
And then also improved theming support. Uh, so uh, right now, Superset is kind of very light on theming support, but um, eCharts has a has a really good support for that. Uh, and um, it'd be nice to to add, for instance, uh, support for um, for dark mode and um, and being able to um, customize uh, not not only how uh, the the Superset uh, layout looks and fonts and colors, but then getting that to go down into, into the charts as well. All right, so that's, that's it. Uh, so I thank you for, for listening to this and uh, uh, I think I'll, I'll be open to uh, taking some questions now. Thank you.